The tag presents collision attacks on round reduced K check using non for Xbox linearization. The tag is divided into five parts. The first part briefly reviews the bike ground. The second part provides an overview of our collision attacks. Part three elaborates on non for Xbox linearization. Part four introduces GPU implementations. The last part summarizes the results. Okay. Hash functions are an important part, so in, an important type of uh, primitives used in crypto systems. The most widely used uh, hash functions are the SHA family. The first member of this family is SHA1. However, its theoretical collision attacks were found in 2005 where is real collisions were found early this year, which is another crypto paper. To develop a new cryptographic hash function, NIST opened a public competition in 2007. The competition received dozens of submissions. After years of evaluation, Kachek was selected as the winner and standardized in 2015. KCheck adopts the sponge construction. The sponge construction is a framework for constructing hash functions from permutations. It uses a B-bit underlying permutation F. There are two parameters, bit rate R, capacity C. The sum of R and C is B. Kachek takes in a message N and output a digest of dBs. Before processing, the message is piloted and then split into R-bit blocks. Each block is XORed to the first R-bits before applying the permutation F. Kachek itself has four versions. Kachek N, N can be 224, 256, 384, 512. SHA-3 has six versions, including two extendable output hash functions. Shake a n can be 128, 256. To promote cryptanalysis against the KCHAC, the designers launched uh, challenges with regarding to collision attacks and pre-image attacks, where versions of lower security levels were proposed. These versions were denoted by Kachek, RC, and RD. D is the digest size. The underlying permutation used in Kachek is called Kachek F. It has an internal state of 1,600 bits, which can be seen as a 5 times 5 array of 64 bit lengths. It iterates 24 runs. Each round consists of five steps Sita, Rho, Pi, Chi, and Yuta. Chi is the only nonlinear operation. Before in the introduction of these steps, let's review some notations defined by the designers. Look at the figure on the right. Suppose it is the internal state. The yellow part is called a slice, and the purple part is called a, lane, a, a column, and the blue part is called a lane, and the sky blue part is called a row. Theta adds two columns to the current bit. So each output bit depends on 11 input bits. Mm, if each column has even parity, then the theta acts as the identity. In this case, we say the state is in the column parity kernel, CP kernel for short. Pi step is lane level rotations. Chi step is the permutation on lanes. Chi step applies a 5 bit S box to each row. From the algebraic expression, 
it can be seen the IOG break degree of chi is two, which is quite low. Yuda adds a round constant to the first lane to destroy symmetry. Suppose the internal state is a, uh, two, uh, five times five array, then the round function can be described in this way. Keep in mind, chi is the only nonlinear operation. And we define the composition of theta rho pi to be L. Yuda in this talk is omitted since it plays no essential role in our attacks. The major contribution of our work is that we propose two practical collision attacks and increase the number of rounds attacked to six. Part two, an overview of our attacks. Our collision attacks have two stages, the connecting stage and the brute force searching stage. In the connecting stage, one constructs an n one round connector and gets a subspace of messages by passing the first n one round. In the brute force searching stage, one tries to find a colliding pair following the later n two round differential trail by brute force. Suppose the n two round differential trail has input difference theta si and output difference theta so. Then the n one round connector is a procedure which produces message pairs n two m one such that the difference after n one rounds is exactly theta s i. At FSC 2012, Dina, Dangelman, and Shamir proposed one round connectors. The one round connector is constructed by processing linear equations. In the one round connector, two major properties of the icebox are used. Property one, given the output difference, the set of possible input difference contains at least five two-dimensional fine subspace. Property two, given the input-output differences, the solution set forms an affine subspace. This is an example for property two. Suppose that both the input-output differences are zero, one, then the DDD entry is eight. The solution set V forms an, a th three-dimensional affine subspace which can be defined by these two equations. Based on these two properties, the one-round connector proceeds in two phases. Suppose the input difference, output difference of chi are beta i, alpha i. Then in the difference of phase, one finds a subspace of input difference beta zero. And in the value phase, by fixing beta zero, one obtains a subspace of input value that leads to data SI. At Eurocrypt 2017, Chow et al. extended the one round connectors to two round connectors by fully linearizing the first round. Let's show how to linearize one S box. By Confining the input to the set V, V contains four elements, which can be defined by these three equations. <laughs> these three equations. Then the S box is equivalent to the following linear mapping. However, there are limitations of current techniques. First of all, each five-bit active s works allows an affine subspace solution of dimension at most two. Consequently, full linearization of two rounds is impossible, since three over five degree of freedom is lost in each round of linearization. So it is also impossible to construct three-round connectors. 
To overcome these limitations, we follow these two directions for improvements. First, we try to save degree of freedom by allowing non-active S-boxes and partial linearization. Second, we develop a faster implementations of KTAC for finding better differential trails, as well as speeding up the brute force stage. Seems finding differential trails and the brute force searching are most time consuming in the attacks. Part three, non for experts linearization. In the construction of two round connectors, once the differences alpha i, beta i are fixed, an equation system over the input value of chi can be constructed respectively for the first chi and the second chi using the property two of the S box. Here, EM is the equation system over the input value of of the first chi, and EZ is the equation system of the input value of the second chi. From EZ, an equivalent system EY can be derived, since between Z and Y is the linear mapping L. To construct a two-round connector, these two equation systems EM and EY should be merged. Fully linearizing the first round is a means to this end. However, it is not necessary to do so, since some bits of Y may not involved, maybe not involved in UI. Before moving on, let's introduce some notations. Let U be a flag vector where UI is one if YI is involved in EY, otherwise UI is zero. Let capital U be a vector of five bit values. If capital UI is not a zero, then the bits of Y marked by UI should be linearized. That is to say, for the bits which are not marked by UI, there is no need to linearize them. We have two observations. Observation one, for a non-active S-box, if UI is zero, then it does not require any linearization. If UI belongs to set T, then at least one equation should be added to EM to linearize the output base marked by UI. Otherwise, at least two equations are required. This table shows the number of linear equations required for linearizing certain number of output bits. Observation two, for an active S-box, if the data T entry is eight, then four out of five output bits are already linear if the input is chosen from the solution set. For example, if the input output differences are Zero, zero, one. then the DDT entry is eight. If the input is chosen from the solution set, then the ILG break expression of the S-box are reduced uh, to this. As can be seen, Y1 is the only nonlinear bit. If Y1 is not involved in the equation system EY, then two equations are enough for the linearization. This table summarizes the two observations. As can be seen, there are many cases where less than three equations are used. So, compared with four S-box linearization, where at least three equations are used, non 4 S-box linearization consumes consume less degrees of freedom. From the table, it is also learned that Non-active non S-boxes probably have advantage over active S-boxes. However, if there are more non-active S-boxes, it would be harder to construct connectors. But once the connector is constructed, is constructed successfully, 
solution sets with higher dimension would be obtained for the brute force searching stage. What we do is we find the best number of non-active S-boxes by experiment. Another technique for saving degrees of freedom is called adaptive connectors. Adaptive connectors are those ones where some degree of freedom that linearize the nonlinear layer are reused. For example, suppose we want to linearize the output a bit y0 by fixing the value of x1. Here, x1 can be fixed to either 1 or 0. If we fix it to 0 this time, we can fix it to 1 next time. So the one bit free degree of freedom can be reused, and that's not consumed. By combining techniques of non forest box linearization and adaptive connectors, we could extend the two round connectors to three round connectors. <laughs> Sorry. For faster implementations, we turn to GPU. We developed two versions. Version one for finding differential trails. Version two for finding real collisions. This table shows the benchmark of our implementation of Kachak in CUDA. The experiments show that a GTX 1070 GPU can be 256 times faster than a CPU core. With our GPU implementations, we find better differential trails, as listed in this table. Here, the blue numbers affect the execution time of connectors, and the purple numbers determine the time complexity for the brute force searching stage. In the end, we find two practical collision attacks, one for the five-round Kachak 224, and the other is a six-round instance of Kachak collision challenges. This table shows the current status of the Kachak collision challenges. In summary, we developed two types of techniques for saving degrees of freedom. One is non for s box linearization. The other is adaptive connectors. We also developed the GPU implementations of KTIC, which gain better computing capacity over CPU implementations. The main results are three round connectors and two new practical collision attacks. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>